Dennis Kappel here of, of Kappel Shoeing and Training, and uh, I've got Mr. Jonathan here with us, and uh, getting ready to pick up a couple horses here he's heading to train, and uh, this mare uh, grass foundered early in the spring, and uh, she's got some some evidence of it. You see, we grow a new foot from the hairline to the ground, and it takes about a year in most most horses to get through. So see we're early in the spring, so we're we're a third of the way down the foot. And that's what that that deep line is you're seeing right there. That's a that, that horses will get that when they've experienced some time usually it has to do with some kind of an intestinal trauma. a uh, high fever can cause that. Some kind of a chemical reaction can cause that. Uh, Cushing's disease can cause that. Laminitis can cause that. Uh, she got a mouthful of grass and and, uh, and she can't take the sugar in the grass. So she's probably, you know, she's got a little age on her. So she, uh, I don't know, you haven't had her tested for Cushing's, have you? I had, she was just under the threshold. Just under. Just under the threshold. So she's right at the borderline of, of having a thyroid issue, <laughs> what we're getting at. and. Uh, you know, so she's she teeters on having uh, proper connectivity in the feet and improper connectivity. And what I mean by that is, just imagine that that uh, this rasp is the coffin bone, and this rasp represents the hoof wall. In a normal situation, we should have the same distance from the front of the foot, uh, front of the coffin bone to the hoof wall down low that we have up high, okay? But as, as this loads up on the ground, the hoof wall loads up on the ground, and what happens in a founder situation is the lamina, which is the connective tissue that holds the hoof wall to the coffin bone, fills up with blood and loses its ability to hold that bone to the hoof wall. So now we get the weight of the horse pushing down like this and we get a separating right there. And so we, we get the ground trying to push this front of this foot capsule away from the coffin bone and the coffin bone because of the weight of the horse, because of the action of the horse, as movement takes place, the deep digital flexor tendon comes down around the back of the leg and it's pulling the coffin bone down as the horse moves forward. So we get a separation here. As far as what the horse is feeling, it'd be about like somebody getting a hold of your thumbnail and just trying to pull it back up over your, your thumb. <laughs> it, it's pretty painful for the horse. So that also, created a situation where we we ended up with some some cracks showing up in the front and that's what Jonathan was talking about is those cracks how do how do we stop that crack and we we stop that crack by changing the mechanics of how this horse loads up on that foot so if we move if we move that if we take the hoof wall that's running out this way, the only way we can stop that pressure from taking that foot out is to eliminate it. So we shorten the outer hoof wall so it doesn't have that prying effect. So then we, we get a, main, a maintenance effect of at least we've eliminated the mechanical pull away. So we've got a chance, we've got a chance, and it doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but we've got a chance of that that coffin bone reattaching to the hoof wall as it needs to be. Um, these horses that have foundered once are prone to do it again, and, and it's, it's pretty hard for them to, to not make it through a year without having some kind of a setback. But if she does, there's a real good chance that this foot can go back to normal. She is sound, so evidently we've got enough circulation return to that foot so that we've got a better chance of, of things happening. But but basically we've, we've just got to, we've got to look at things from a perspective of, 
if we if we take the sole out across here anywhere at all she's going to be so sore she can't walk so we've got to leave all the mass across here that we can get but we also need to eliminate the prying effect that's taking place in this hoof wall so so i go right out here which would be see where the where the where the bars terminate into the frog and across the widest part of the foot that is that is the center of her foot that's that's right below p2 straight below p2 which is the short pastern two inches in front of that mark puts us right about here that's where i want her to break over so i'm going to go out ahead of that and angle that rasp in a way that we get this kind of an angle out here so she's loading up back here and not out there but i didn't take anything off here so she's standing on hip wall and sole all the way across right underneath the point of that coffin bone but we've eliminated the prying effect out front so that allows the external hoof capsule some time to grow down and as it grows down without the mechanical prying away it's got a chance that that crack is going to grow off and never be there again you see old ways of of looking at it that you know horseshoes would would heat up a, a rasp or a pritchel and go to the top of that uh, crack and burn a hole all the way through to sensitive tissue and it, it, not that that doesn't work but we haven't fixed the problem all we've done is address the crack itself and the crack itself is no problem if we address it mechanically correctly on, on the on the bottom of the foot so anyway that's there's a lesson in in uh, in a lot of different cases founder uh, uh, you know that's primarily what we're dealing with but normal growth will produce the same kind of mechanics so we've, we've got to keep addressing that foot and bringing it back, putting the foot under. Ideally, we're, we're wanting to achieve a straight bone alignment, which we've got here with her, in through the, the long pasture and the short pasture and the coffin bone. Those bones are lining up as they should underneath her. That angle now pretty well matches her shoulder angle. You see the, the angle in her foot and the angle in her shoulder are pretty well the same. The hoof wall is the same distance from the ground inside and outside. So though she doesn't have a shoe on right now, she is supported in in a way that I believe is 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 her most comfortable position that she can be in. And I'll, if if she if she is a little bit you know tender because of uh, not having any shoes on, you just simply put a shoe on that and We've got the, the the trim for for shoeing and the and the trim for uh, running barefoot is basically the same. You know, I, I probably leave them a little bit longer uh, when I'm when I'm leaving um, foot on there for uh, to be to be barefoot. But the mechanics are are the same, and the, you know. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, I, pulled, I watched that twice. Pulled the chain cord on that one and it just took off, didn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>